uh, in one of uh, Jordan Peterson's books mm -hmm. when uh, he explained uh, one of the first things that uh, he asks his uh, clinical patients is uh, whether or not they're waking up at a roughly uh, same time every mm -hmm. morning. And that's one of the one of the first things that he actually tries to uh, fix uh, with, with his patients. And that's purely for managing their anxiety and depression. Wow. And furthermore, that's the, he uses it as a cornerstone mm -hmm. uh, to build everything else lifestyle-wise on top of it. So um, if, if someone as, um, um, as famous as, as he is, mm -hmm. if he's implementing something like that, that's... Uh... Hello, Alexa. I'm so excited to have you as a guest to my podcast. Hi, Felicia. The pleasure is all mine. Thanks for having me. Of course. Before we dive into today's topic, which is uh, how you help people overcome obstacles that stand between them and their health and fitness goal, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself to our audience and uh, if you can tell us some words about you. It would be wonderful. Okay. <laughs> um, my full name is Aleksa Milosevic. I'm from Belgrade, Serbia. Mm -hmm. And I've... Uh, I've been in fitness for, I guess that my fitness journey started in 2013 when I um, when I enrolled at the Belgrade Sports Academy. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, after that, um, I, I moved to Australia and I spent there, I was there for three years, close to three years. Mm -hmm. I uh, enrolled at the Australian College of Sport and Fitness. And I also worked over there in a couple of uh, fitness centers mm -hmm. before returning to my homeland uh, in 2019 where uh, I picked up where I left off here. Mm. So pretty much uh, that's my whole fitness journey in a nutshell. Oh, okay. So you're in Belgrade right now? Yes, currently currently in Belgrade. Yeah. And you're a coach, like a personal trainer, right? That's yes, my understanding. Uh, yeah, yeah. Currently, uh, for the most part, I'm doing face-to-face -face personal mm -hmm. training. And uh, I'm starting to dip my toes into online coaching as well. That's something that I'm working on behind the curtains mm -hmm. so hopefully soon it's gonna it's gonna be live uh, live okay so let's talk about health and fitness we see so many people at the meeting at the beginning of the year the gym or to start a healthy diet only to see them mm -hmm. quit after a short period of time what do you think are the common obstacles why people are quitting so quickly you know in your opinion of course it's because you have so much experience right now yeah, uh, it's something uh, that keeps reoccurring, uh, especially um, in my line of work uh, when working face to face. Um, I tend to see not only what's happening with people I'm working directly, but also with with people that um, that are passing through the gym. Um, mm -hmm. So um, it's pretty common that um, whenever whenever a new year rolls around. Uh, it's like a trend, the, right? It's like a trend. Everybody yeah. wants to do something new. They want to change something with their bo their bodies. You know, it's healthy, which is great. Yeah, However, totally. like one month, not even one month later. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's a whole a new year, new me. Uh, we kind of um, yes. we sugarcoat things, and we mm. we feel like just because we we're getting a clean slate mm -hmm. that um, things are just going to magically uh, happen themselves. Mm -hmm. But um, in reality. Uh, what happens there is that people people get that surge of motivation and um, motivation is is a very potent fuel mm -hmm. but it's also a very fast burning fuel um, I agree and real problems occur when uh, we run out of that fuel mm -hmm. um, so they need then, something or someone to keep people motivating right motivated for for fitness and healthy life yeah yeah that's um, that, that's definitely one way. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to find an external uh, source of, uh, of motivation, someone that's going to keep pushing you mm -hmm. and uh, inspire maybe. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To keep reminding you why, why you're, mm -hmm. uh, why you begun in the first place, mm -hmm. why you shouldn't give up and whatnot. But um, uh, for people that um, are aiming to, to push on their own, um, it's important to, to realize that um, when they enter that so-called race, mm -hmm. um, that it's not all or nothing. Uh, people tend to um, start off driven by that surge of motivation. They tend to start 
uh, with 100%. Mm -hmm. They give everything they got. They leave yeah. every last ounce of energy. Yeah. Uh, But I think they believe the they will they will actually do it. I, I, I think uh, they, they yeah. truly believe they, they're truly believe they're going to, to yeah. do it, right? It's just... Oh, 100%. It's a um, lack of belief is certainly not a problem there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's the fact that uh, people tend to overestimate their Uh, mm -hmm. their physical abilities because um okay. when you when you go when you go all out mm -hmm. um fatigue starts to creep up and um it, it becomes increasingly difficult okay. to keep going and to maintain mm -hmm. such a such a high pace mm -hmm. um people tend to train too hard tend to diet too hard to starve themselves mm -hmm. and that um and only can last soon, so much right yeah it, soon, it soon becomes yeah yeah, yeah. exactly exactly mm -hmm. that that's the That's the problem. Uh, the other um, potential reason why why people may give up is if they get discouraged by not seeing results. And yes, I can see that. Yes, I agree. So, so, that's, so sorry. So, if if let's say we are starting a regime with a healthy diet, like a fitness, when we can see some results? Because, like you said, results can be a, a strong motivation to keep going. Yeah. Uh, so. Depending on the result, um, uh, it can be as long I mean, as I'm, I'm talking like a tiny result. I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not talking the big result, the, you know, the, yeah. the full, you know, um, different person. It's just seeing a little bit of results from, um, the, the, from the, the effort because it's, in, it's an yeah. effort. If, if someone simply wants to feel better, mm -hmm. um, if, if that's the goal, like to, Uh, simply feel better when they get up in the morning to have a little bit more energy mm. uh, to sleep a bit better mm -hmm. to uh, have more stable mood uh, that can happen in a matter of 24 hours oh, okay that's uh, good yeah it's good uh, those are those are very subtle little changes some of it uh, might even be placebo but um obviously um uh, the greater the, the greater the chances uh, mm -hmm. the changes sorry um the longer it's going to take mm -hmm. to achieve them um okay so, now how you can help people overcome these obstacles i mean do we have like a <laughs> magic recipe for that or because everybody's expecting like a like something like a recipe like a magic recipe over the night probably it's not going to happen but yes how you yeah um sometimes i i actually do feel like uh people see me as a as a magician <laughs> speaking of magic recipes yes but um uh, it's um it definitely is a magic recipe because uh, it takes uh you have to take so many things into consideration uh we're all very different and especially if we're talking yes. about working people remotely different cultures different Absolutely. lifestyles everything is so different but uh even when we're speaking about purely physiological things mm -hmm. um we all handle stress uh differently uh we all have different food preferences uh we all have uh, different amounts of time to allocate To anything other than work yeah. and family well so, i will uh, um, i will put it in different way i would put like priorities mm -hmm. because we have the same amount right. of time time everybody right. we have the, the same amount of time it's just uh changing you know the fine tune the priorities right what's important what is not that important so i think they have to change a little bit where they put oh <laughs> i i 100 agree it's, it's all about making the time for, mm -hmm. for what matters and uh like with anything else in life i totally agree that If you want to introduce something new into your life, mm -hmm. such as fitness, such mm -hmm. as uh, working out, eating healthy, um, it has to come up in your priority list. Because uh, anything new, anything challenging for yourself is gonna, it's gonna take more, uh, more focus, more discipline, uh, more of everything in order for you mm -hmm. to integrate that into your mm -hmm. life. Once it becomes integrated. Uh, it's a lot easier to sustain it. But in the beginning, uh, it's going to have to considerably climb up the priority list. Yes. It's like a uh, habit, yeah. right? We need to create a new habit and oh, absolutely. take away the the old, not so good habits, right? It's pretty much oh, absolutely. a habit. And we need, what, 60 days to learn a new habit? That's pretty uh, much yeah, a... <laughs> scientific, yeah, scientific li literature shows something like that around 60 mm -hmm. days. But uh, I, I feel like uh, it can be highly individual. Um, the way I, I tend to approach things is I try to, um, to first identify the big overarching goal. Um, and then the second step would normally be to lay out habits and skills, uh, mm -hmm. that are required, uh, for someone to be able to even 
um, consider pursuing such a path. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at that point, we we start estimating how realistic uh, it is for, for example, someone wants to um, lose 12 kilos in mm-hmm. 12 weeks. Um, and it's totally, it's realistic from the perspective of science. Um, for someone, let's say, it has 100 kilos. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's roughly 1% of their body weight per week, mm-hmm. which is a healthy, sustainable amount to lose per week. But if they don't have the skills, for example, if they don't know how to prepare uh, healthy meals, mm-hmm. uh, they don't have the logistics to uh, hit the supermarket every couple of days to gather what they need, mm-hmm. to then uh, make the time um, to chop up all the foods. Uh, yeah. It, so it's not just going to the gym, really. It's it's a little bit more than it's like a it's, it's a program, right? It's 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 like a program with different courses, right? But one is fitness, one is diet, one is discipline, yeah. right? So it's this is what I'm seeing, to be honest. Yeah, it's it's very um, it's a very how would I say multidisciplinary mm-hmm. uh, area. Um, there's a lot of a lot of psychology. There's a lot of it is. Uh, time management, there's a lot of um, purely uh, being able to withstand physical pain while Mm -hmm. working out. Um, There's so much to it. But um, before any of that really happens, um, logistics need to be put in place. You you need to have a a plan, depending on whether... Like the guide and the... Like like I said, the plan and the guide and be able to go back because you're losing your motivation. Then if you go back to your, you know, to your plan, you're like safe. (laughs) You're not lost. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If if you look at it um, as one, one side of the spectrum being complete Mm -hmm. chaos and the other side of the spectrum being complete order. Yes. uh, That aspect of your life, uh, if you're only starting out with your fitness journey, Mm -hmm. is in complete chaos. And then you slowly need to pull it Mm -hmm. from that one end of the spectrum to the other, like yin and yang and what, there are a Absolutely, lot of analogies yeah. that you can use for it. Uh, for example, some of the skills that I try to uh, teach the people, people that I work with, uh, certain habits that they can develop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I normally start with sleep. Uh, sleep, their... yes. Sleep is so important, right? Wow. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yes. Without a proper sleep hygiene, mm-hmm. without getting at least seven of seven hours of sleep mm-hmm. every night, uh, everything else is going to be a lot harder. Recovering from the workouts, handling stress, uh, even losing body fat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been scientifically shown that people who uh, don't sleep enough, even though they're nutritionally doing what, what they need to do, they're having a much harder time mm-hmm. uh, achieving results compared to people who have their sleep in check. Yeah, so the, the sleep cannot be replaced, to be honest. This is what I, I yeah, learned. And I'm reading so many yeah. articles and sleep cannot be replaced. Unfortunately not. <laughs> Unfortunately <have> <laughs> not. Um, yeah, we, we just have to. We and have uh, to. there are a lot of bio, biohackers out there that think that with, mm-hmm. with smart drugs, with uh, different uh, lifestyle interventions mm-hmm. that you can, that you can uh, replace good night's sleep. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, mm-hmm. At least um, there's no scientific literature to support any of those methods. Mm-hmm. Uh, but who knows? Maybe one day there's going to... Yeah. Uh, they're going to in- invent a magic pill that's going <laughs> to... Well, everybody's waiting for the magic pill. Yeah. I don't know if even exists something, something like that. So, uh, but you know, I'm curious about your um, clients or students, or I don't know how you call them, um, what they say at the end, because probably in the beginning, it's like, you know, they're excited, but then like, oh my God, this is not quite easy. But in the end, when they're losing weight, they're like have a, a, a better life. Because if you have a ha- healthy life, you, you even sleeping, if you eat healthy, you sleep better than if you don't eat healthy. This mm-hmm. is what I, 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 I realize myself. When I'm not eating proper, my sleep is not the same. It's not. It's so different. Yeah, right? definitely. One of the mm-hmm. things that I've implemented with myself, for example, uh, for the past couple of months in, in regards to the connection between food and sleep. Mm-hmm. I realized that I have to push my meals uh, further away from my bedtime mm-hmm. because I just uh, I uh, I tend to fall asleep easier. I don't get as dehydrated during mm-hmm. the night, and I wake up in the morning uh, easier. Yeah. I, I feel mm-hmm. better rested. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if if that's because of that, but I assume it is. I, I, yeah, I, I, I believe it, it is. Yes, yes. And um, I'm uh, reading uh, Alex Hormozzi. I don't know if you know of him. Um, no. He, oh, you have to read his book. Anyway, um, he started his business as um, um, like what, what you're doing right now. And one of the um, the challenge he had with his clients was, uh, and I, I see myself 
um, okay, I'm doing like this nice diet, I eat healthy, but I'm going out sometimes. I'm going out with my friends. I'm going out, you know, social mm-hmm. life. So people are, what I would, because we, are, we have, you know, uh, we are tempted to eat not so healthy when we go out. So what he did, he created a little guide, like a book, and just right. carry with you, right? If you're like afraid, you're not remembering, you don't have eat this and that, just, you know, take the book with you, take the guide with you, and then... And I think it's an amazing idea, brilliant idea. <laughs> oh, oh, it is. It is definitely. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I I try to uh, achieve a similar thing with uh, with my clients um, in terms of like they always share if they they, they tend to feel guilty if uh, they go out and uh, mm-hmm. eat something that's not considered to be healthy or mm-hmm. they have a few drinks more or something like that. And um, and I always uh, go back to like, okay, how frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, is that being done if yes. it's like every it other month or it's every day <laughs> yeah um and more importantly um is it uh, affecting your results in a negative mm. way uh for example um if you have a very uh, mentally intellectually demanding job uh, mm-hmm. and if you have i don't know three or four drinks the night before obviously you're not going to be no. uh, functioning uh, at your full capacity. So uh, we can draw a parallel. Let, let's say we can take an example from fitness. Uh, if you tend to um, dine out mm-hmm. every single night, uh, even though you're doing everything else properly, yeah. uh, if you're losing the amount of weight, if that's your goal, if you're losing uh, the, the, the planned amount of weight at mm-hmm. the end of the week, uh, you can keep that. Uh, but if not, uh, you're going to have to do something about that habit. Uh, either um, dine out less frequently or... or... at least choose the the proper meal, right? At, at least. Because, yes. you know, yes. nowadays, restaurants offer, like, the menus. It, honestly, they, they offer different kinds, so you can actually choose, like, good food from the menu, right? So Oh, oh absolutely. There are definitely restaurants like that. And mm-hmm. uh, in terms of damage control, I try to encourage my clients to pick places that uh, mm-hmm. have some healthy alternatives, like... Um, if they eat meat, like mm-hmm. leaner cuts of meat uh, from uh, that, that is grilled, uh, rather than like being deep fried or mm-hmm. like, prepared in, a, in an unhealthy way, to, uh, for them to be able to order some salads, mm-hmm. um, vegetables, um, salads, but not dressing on the salads because the dressing is a problem, not the salad, right? The, yeah, dress, yeah, yeah. the nice dressing from Caesar salad, for example. I, I like Caesar salad, but I know. The dressing, the dressing is not so good for for yeah, for the just, body. You, yeah, you just pointed out that one of my <laughs> biggest challenges uh, when I work with people, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of times uh, they can order something that's on paper, mm-hmm. really healthy, but just as you mentioned, that uh, salad dressing can uh, contain quite a few calories for oh. fats. Uh, also, um, in general, uh, a bunch of dishes contain mm-hmm. uh, a lot of hidden fats, a lot of hidden yeah. calories. Like for example, you have some dish that contains chicken and rice mm-hmm. but they added cooking cream a uh, bunch of oil butter um, and the, exactly you don't know what type of oil they're using right because only a yeah. few types of oils it's actually they're good for us and i know we can actually do another like like a topic for the podcast oh absolutely yeah but what i'm seeing is the discipline is very important right right can you give our audience a few tips how they can actually stay disciplined or keep the discipline because uh if we have a social life, ah, uh, it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, d- discipline, discipline mm-hmm. is crucial. I mean, and uh, discipline uh, is the only thing to bridge the gap between uh, order and chaos. Obviously, mm-hmm. you cannot uh, live like a like a soldier, uh, simply no. uh, eating everything uh, yeah. perfectly healthy, uh, count everything to the very last gram, yeah. and whatnot. Uh, but also. Uh, you cannot be, uh, if you want to achieve certain results, mm-hmm. if you want to be healthy, look good and whatnot, mm-hmm. you cannot be uh, in the other end of the spectrum, having no control, just eating what tastes good and having no other um, concerns in mind. Snap Advantage is a digital marketing agency that helps your online business scale profitably by helping you build and leverage digital marketing assets. Snap Advantage utilizes the power of social media email, influencers, and text marketing throughout a team of experts that have been working for the last six years with businesses as big as 
20 million in annual revenue. Snap Advantage promise is to deliver results and not fluff, and usually their partners see an increase of 20% month on month in the first quarter of working with them. When it, when it comes to discipline, um, just a few tips. Give we, us, please, we, please, give we, us a few we, tips. We need, we need to, we, we need, we need to establish some rules. We need to establish mm-hmm. some ground rules. Uh, that's the only way uh, for us to um, to be able to establish some control. Um, so, I tend to uh, encourage uh, one of one of the first um, strategies that I use with people is um, it's time restricted feeding. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, if, if there's a time of the day uh, where, for example, a lot of people tend to uh, consume majority of their calories in the evening, mm. uh, what I tend to do is uh, I encourage them to uh, set their feeding window between like 12 p.m. and let's say 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. So that I'm, I'm six. After... I'm at 12 to six. That's my window. So I oh, think I'm, right. I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's advanced. That's mm-hmm. eighteen to six. That's, oh, thank uh, that's you. Great. Oh, I always feel good. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, so uh, that that's how I normally normally try to. Or for example, if uh, for for whatever reason I cannot implement that um, with an individual's lifestyle, I tend to look for other common pitfalls that they might encounter. Um, for example, if if you're a snacker, if mm-hmm. you like to snack a lot, uh, don't buy snacks. Don't keep them in yes. your house. Yes. I mean, it's it's easier said than done, but uh, by not having the temptation in front of you, you already um, yeah. you, you already did have to work. Absolutely, uh, yes. There are tons of uh, examples like that, but I try I try to um, approach uh, every person uh, differently and to try to figure out uh, what they're struggling with mm-hmm. in order to uh, give them proper advice. Because um, that's why, unfortunately, I I don't have any. Uh, tips for discipline that are like mm-hmm. generalized okay how uh, about you how how to keep yourself disciplined because i'm pretty sure you are you're pretty content right. right what what are a few rules you are applying pretty much let's say daily like okay. in the mornings in the afternoons maybe in the evenings or yeah if you just if yeah. it's not a secret like a no <laughs> no, a secret. No. <laughs> no 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 secrets here nor okay. is it anything uh, revolutionary um one of the one of the rules that I have for myself is uh, that I try not to eat after 7 p.m. because I normally go to bed around 10 p.m., okay. which gives me roughly three hours to uh, digest the food and um, have enough water mm-hmm. so I don't feel dehydrated when I get up in the morning. Um, that's one thing. And it also prevents me from snacking, mm-hmm. overeating, whatever. That's one of the rules. I also, I'm a firm believer in trying to uh, adapt... Uh, your nutritional uh, habits uh, and sync them with your circadian rhythm. So mm-hmm. basically, I try to eat as soon as possible upon waking. That's something that... Uh, really? Wow. I so used, very I early in the to... morning? Yes. Uh, wow. uh, I mean, obviously, uh, that's probably not possible for me, like, in the first hour or so, mm-hmm. because I'm trying, I'm rushing, preparing to get out of mm-hmm. the house and go to mm-hmm. work. But uh, the first chance I get, uh, I normally bring my breakfast with me. And I try to have it uh, as soon as I can. The first... Uh, it's like a fuel um, for you, right? It's like sorry? a fuel? Like a fuel. You need fuel. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Day. Exactly. Mm. exactly. And uh, the, the way I look at things is I try to have um, most of my carbohydrates mm-hmm. for energy. Exactly. Uh, while, I'm, while I'm at my most active. Uh, okay. being, uh, being at work, uh, working out. So I try to condense uh, my carbohydrate intake. Uh, when I need it the most, when my mm-hmm. brain needs fuel, when my muscles need fuel. So uh, that's the second, third rule or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, and uh, I try to I try to not uh, let more than three hours, three to four hours uh, as uh, for more than three to four hours to pass between my meals. Because okay. what that what what tends to happen in those cases, like if you if you get yourself uh, used to uh, having meals less frequently, that's fine. But um, the best way to keep your blood sugar levels stable mm-hmm. um, and avoid those ups and downs, crashes and whatnot, is to have a, 
less than three hours yeah, between uh, between the meals about yeah, yeah roughly roughly mm -hmm. roughly three hours so that's yeah. that's also something that i try to do mm -hmm. um other than that i i try to for, for for the most part to focus on uh nutritiously dense foods such as uh lean cuts of meat uh grains vegetables fruits mm -hmm. uh dairy um nothing super revolutionary i i just try to uh, keep my protein intake mm -hmm. high uh to support recovery from workouts and, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it that's roughly yeah uh four meals per day and um interesting yeah, un unless unless i uh i have a, a more specific goal in mind unless mm -hmm. i i particularly want to drop my body fat levels mm -hmm. as much as possible like if uh if i need to go uh for a vacation or something mm -hmm. and i know that i'm going to be taking my shirt off uh, uh okay so you wanna um, look i want to be happy mm -hmm. i want to be happy with myself that's the, that's the uh, main thing okay. uh so uh but for the most part like i i'm not doing anything that's um super different to no but it's a discipline you 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 are watching your diet you're watching your schedule you're sleeping well on time and 10 8, 10 p.m is great actually um I'm at nine in bed uh, because I want to make sure I read at least one hour. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty much the same. It, it's something that I'm doing for the last probably five years. I'm um, just regretting I didn't start earlier. I wish, I wish, yeah, I knew before. But uh, like you said, I'm seeing results. I'm seeing, I feel better. I can, you know, I focus better. And this is what is the most important thing for me because now I, I, I can do so many things. I have more energy. If I, uh, last night I, I, I had like eight hours good sleep. And I know when I wake up without an alarm, right? And I, we, we should actually wake up without an alarm. This is how our body would like us to be, not to be wake up by. An, an alarm. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually read the same, the, mm. the very same thing on in multiple uh, different uh, publications. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's one of the, for example, uh, in one of uh, Jordan Peterson's books, mm -hmm. when uh, he explains uh, one of the first things that uh, he asks his uh, clinical patients is uh whether or not they're waking up at a roughly uh same time every mm -hmm. morning and that's one of the one of the first things that he actually tries to uh fix uh with with his patients and that's purely for managing their anxiety and depression wow. and furthermore that's the, he uses it as a cornerstone mm -hmm. uh to build everything else lifestyle wise on top of it so um. if if someone as um um, as famous as, as he is, mm -hmm. if he's implementing something like that, that's, uh, yeah. he's definitely but I also something. think, and that's my, actually my next question, question <clears throat> is related to my next question, question to try different things. So what is one misconception about healthy life? I mean, we see so much information about health, hacks, how to stay healthy, diets, you know, exercise is pretty much an abundance of information. How do we okay. know what is good and what is not so good for us? Because now we are bomb, honestly. You, you can find information yeah. everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's definitely there's mm -hmm. definitely too much, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, I totally understand the concern. It is uh, concern sometimes because uh, uh, most people don't don't have the time to like uh, do thorough research and uh, to to try and compare. And so, as a general rule of thumb, mm -hmm. um, um, anyone who's promising um, amazing results. In a in a short period sure. of time, mm. uh, is probably selling snake oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, um, focusing on the end goal as well, like you're gonna lose like this amount of kilos in mm -hmm. this amount of uh, days or weeks or or whatnot. In my opinion, uh, that's also the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. um, the right approach, I believe, is uh, to try and to focus on the behaviors, habits, and tools that you can use on a daily basis sustainably mm -hmm. uh, for as long as you're alive. I mean, you can tweak things depending on whether you need to be uh, super fit for mm -hmm. an occasion like vacation or, mm -hmm. or, or not. But uh, generally speaking, um, making a lifestyle out of it uh, rather than looking at it as a, as a project that has uh, a beginning and an end yeah uh this is this is not something like fitness related health related stuff uh, it shouldn't uh have an end uh, it should be something that going uh is yeah it, that's there to stay mm -hmm. and it's lifestyle uh, right it's like lifestyle yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely so uh, and 
in order for someone to truly be healthy and uh, both physically and mentally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I like that. To... I really like that. Both, not just physically, but mentally as well. Yes. Because uh, both are very, very related. Um, and important. Equal, I would say. Uh, Equally abs- important. Absolutely. Yes. Um, it's important to look at the whole thing as a marathon and not mm-hmm. a sprint. Like, uh, you're not going to get any rewards if you uh, lose five or ten kilos mm-hmm. in uh, five or six weeks uh, as opposed to five or six months mm-hmm. uh, but if you take your time to actually understand the process uh, um, exactly each component why it's being done in a, at a given time um, over the course of let's say five or six months you're, you're probably going to learn enough uh, mm-hmm. to be able to uh, sustain that weight loss uh, for the longer term and also to avoid uh, those mental pitfalls then one can occur uh, when once people burn out if they go too aggressive for mm-hmm. example I constantly use weight loss as an example because that's probably the most common goal these days yes and it's very trendy everybody want to yeah. you know in a short period of times but they're like miserable they're always upset they're always like angry they're like we don't want that right we want to lose weight but we want to be happy at the same time yeah, that's the, that's the <laughs> thing, because uh, uh, w- once you find some uh, a system, once you develop mm-hmm. a system uh, comprised Which takes of, time, uh, like you said, which, which takes t- time. Which takes, <laughs> takes time, um, like, mm-hmm. like the, uh, developing any, any mm-hmm. habits uh, or skills. Um, once you uh, acquire all of those uh, skills and habits, um, you're, you're going to be able to adjust uh, no matter what what else is happening in your life for example you might be changing jobs you might be moving houses you might a lot of things can divorcing, happen divorcing people divorce and yeah yeah uh, it, so, it's a hard period period for for, but, those, uh, for if, divorcing for example yes but for example if someone is taking a different route mm-hmm. uh, an aggressive route mm-hmm. where they're trying to uh, uh, start themselves uh, run mm-hmm. themselves into the ground uh, working out way too hard um it's it's just gonna it's on top of all the stress it's another stress on top one already have the stress and stress is a universal currency Mm -hmm. like it doesn't matter whether it's caused by overtraining Mm -hmm. by starvation Mm -hmm. uh, by emotional uh, stress by whatever it may be uh it all takes a toll on us so uh, it's a much better way to take the time uh gradually uh get used to um the new life that you're trying to lead mm-hmm. uh as opposed to just just um trying to force yourself into it as quickly yeah. as possible to see the results like it's, yeah it's, it's just, always it's about the results make... right it's always about yeah. the results so yeah and, great. And that, that, don't get me wrong it's great right but we, absolutely it's not just it's not only right <laughs> oh, definitely the, uh, the way i try to work around that issue because okay i'm i'm also uh, a result uh, results driven individual mm-hmm. um I, I try to understand people that like they have a result and they want to achieve it mm-hmm. and while i'm trying to teach them different skills and uh ingrate different habits into their lives i also mm-hmm. try to uh, to break down that big goal mm-hmm. uh into smaller ones small uh, and achievable example. ones achievable yes, exactly. if they're achievable they... we'll be happy because we'll have some yeah, results yeah. <laughs> exactly uh the the, uh, the goals that they can hit on a weekly basis for example mm-hmm. let's say instead of looking at uh, losing x amount of kilos in like three months mm-hmm. uh for example if that's 12 kilos in 12 weeks that's a kilo per week and every single week they hit that goal uh they have a reason to feel good about themselves it's not like they're just doing things and changing things and sacrificing mm-hmm. things and nothing's happening um there is there is some measure of progress mm-hmm. because we 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 managed to break down that bigger goal that big scary goal Absolutely, into yeah. into many less uh scary goals mm-hmm. oh my god it's an entire science to be honest um because we often think oh i'm just going to the gym have some exercises i hope i will lose some weight you know but yeah, more and more we are learning it's more more than that. So in your opinion, if you can def- have a definition for a healthy life, just uh, in, in, in a few words, what is a, a healthy life in your opinion? Uh, this is going <laughs> to sound cliche, but uh, the way I see it, um, mm-hmm. a, a healthy life is a balanced life. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and what I mean by that is, uh, as much as I can be subjective, uh, being someone that um, does this for a living, um, and I like to train in my free time, and I genuinely enjoy mm-hmm. uh, e- eating healthy and whatnot. But uh, if we put all of that aside, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, one end of the spectrum is chaos. The other mm-hmm. end of the spectrum is order. Um, I believe uh, that n- no one would be, can be truly happy with themselves mm-hmm. uh, if they're uh, living in one end of the, those two spectrums. Uh, it's constant search and art of trying to uh, be somewhere in the middle. The middle. Uh, in, context, in context of fitness yeah. and uh, a healthy lifestyle, mm-hmm. uh, it's to... Uh, and we, we have to, to enjoy our lives as well, right? Exactly, it, exactly. It's, it's to, also important. Absolutely. So the way I would try to put it in one sentence, hopefully mm-hmm. I'm going to succeed. Uh, a healthy life uh, is when you're doing enough uh, to keep yourself uh, healthy, mm-hmm. but also enough uh, to keep yourself entertained. Mm-hmm. So, and one shouldn't uh, outweigh the other. I mean, it's going to also vary from person to person. Like some people are just predisposed to certain illnesses, mm-hmm. uh, but and and those those people uh, will probably have to do more for their health, to be more rigid with their food, absolutely uh, yes, uh, more rigid with their physical activity mm-hmm. and whatnot. But um, yeah, it's... they they would say work hard, play hard. Yes. I guess yes. that would be the, the most accurate known description for it. Mm-hmm. It's like when we are preparing a, a new recipe, the first time it's not going to be, or maybe it will, but it takes time, right? To master. Absolutely. And I think it's the same, right? Or to change a little bit the taste. Maybe we want to add something, we want to remove something. I think I think it's the same. It's the same, a, 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 a healthy balance in, yep. in our, yep. our lives. Yeah, amazing. Balancing. Oh my God, I feel I, I, I want to invite you again. <laughs> and I, I'm... I'm <laughs> I will invite you again because we can actually um, uh, customize a little bit the topics because today was more like a, a general um, aspect of a healthy life. I always ask my guests at the end of um, the interview um, one question. What is one piece of advice you would give to your clients or to our audience? One piece of advice. <laughs> one piece of, the, of advice, yes. Boil it all down to one. Oh, uh, okay. At least one. Let's, let's put different way at least one (laughs) um that's a difficult one it's a difficult one um find balance (laughs) it's 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 all about uh, again because um it's boring it's boring to be um to have everything in control and in Mm -hmm. check and to always strive to be perfect with everything Mm -hmm. and leading such a lifestyle like healthy lifestyle you can become obsessive about it it's Mm -hmm. common so um no matter how healthy you become Mm -hmm. uh, how good looking you become uh, Mm -hmm. all the goals that you may achieve um don't forget to have fun uh and vice versa if you're having too much fun don't forget about your health and uh that's why I sometimes I say that my job is more of an art than a science mm-hmm. because I'm constantly trying to uh, I'm trying to balance my life as well and I don't think that I'm perfect at it but also to try and navigate others through it mm-hmm. is uh, is is a real art so yeah uh, it is an art your life yeah yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that was amazing amazing discussion I uh, I uh, I'm looking forward actually to to have more and more um, interview with you because I'm learning so much. Um, and I know you want to, I mean, you're not doing online, right, uh, training, but still, if someone wants to approach you, how they can... I'm currently at the crossroads of some sort. Uh-huh. Uh, so far, I, I've been offering um, online cooperation to people okay. that I, I worked with in person beforehand, mm-hmm. uh, so that I could continue uh, to help them out, to guide them and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But I'm currently in the preparatory stages of... Uh, purely uh, setting up a business that's going to be uh, attracting and uh, guiding people from the get-go online. Excellent. If that so, makes sense. Are you on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, where people can find you? If, uh, wanna... if not, again, it's not a, if it's not a secret, of course, no, <laughs> where no, people no. can find you? Let's, let's ask no. a different way. Where people can find you if they want to find you? Uh, they can find me on my website. Uh, mm-hmm. The website is live. Uh, it's elite personal training belgrade.com. 
Okay. I will try That's, to write uh, on a I can, description. I can write it in the, in the chat below. Yes, please. So. Yes. And then people will have access. And uh, you're in Belgrade. So if people are in Belgrade, please make sure you are reaching out to Alexa. And uh, yeah, I, I would definitely. Yes. And uh, anyway, thank you so much. It was amazing, amazing information. What can I say? And uh, uh, easy to understand because I think this is very important. Sometimes we just, oh, I have to have a life, like a healthy life, but we don't quite understand why. Um, so I think it's important to, to learn how to to digest the information and use the information. Right? I, I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree, agree with you. A lot of this, this that I was talking about may mm -hmm. sound very cliche, mm -hmm. but uh, that's because people tend to expect Mm -hmm. uh, something revolutionary, something magical, something that's going to be a quick fix. And unfortunately, people, mm -hmm. uh, there's no such thing, at least when it comes to health mm -hmm. and fitness. Like you have to work it out. You have to mm -hmm. find out what works with you, with your lifestyle and mm -hmm. implement it one step at a time. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, again, looking forward to, to see you again. Thank you, Felicia.